Hello, this is David Chen, professor of kinesiology, author of Stress Management and Prevention, Applications to Daily Living, third edition. Stress management prevention has come a long way. We have observed the changes of models and theories over the years, and we benefited from all the contributions from great psychologists and neurologists and uh, biologists to this area, from Sigmund Freud, Walter Cannon, to uh, Carl Rogers and George Miller, you name it, and Aaron Beck and Dave Burns. And recently, there's a huge amount of development in the area of mindfulness-based approaches to stress management and prevention. And this is what I will emphasize uh, in my future teaching, even, even though everything else uh, still we will talk about Freud, we talk about a psychoanalytical approach, we talk about Carl Rogers' uh, humanistic approach and behaviorism and uh, cognitive psychology. But on the back of that, the emergence of mindfulness-based approach to stress management and prevention is the future. Why do I say that? Why do I emphasize that the mindfulness-based approach to stress management is the future? All the research that, that has come along in the last 20 years, especially the late, um, the last 10 years, has pointed to the fact that some of the major, some of the intractable mental depression disorders begin to yield to the influence of mindfulness approaches. We can see the changes in the thickness of our cerebral cortex. We can see that as we begin to cultivate the mindfulness in ourselves, we observe the, the increase of well-being, becoming more free to choose what we want to eat, become uh, the master of our lives, so to speak, because we have more choices, we're more free. So what is mindfulness anyway, you may ask? Mindfulness is the state of a non-judgmental awareness. And there are several elements to it, basically. For instance, if you are mindful, you will experience things as they happen, without judgment, with total acceptance. And every time you experience a, a uh, event, a very sad event, you begin to dissenter from that event. Now, you still are the same person, but you begin to notice how you react. For instance, if you have a bad exam, horrible result. You, you may fail to graduate on time. Your parents are really can be upset about it. So this is not the time for you to get stressed out. This is the time for you to step back. Okay, I feel stressed. I have some. You face the reality head on. So mindfulness allows you to look at, experience your emotions, your, your thoughts, your bodily feelings. You begin to recognize all the pain in your solar plexus area, in your body, or your head, you acknowledge them, for better or for worse. This is what mindfulness is all about. This is not the natural state, by the way, because by the natural state, all of us are a habituated animal. I mean, we do things reflexively. We don't think about what we're doing because we have been trained to do things automatically. By automaticity, I mean, you know, driving. Sometimes you drive, you get in the car, you drive, and you don't know when you get home. You hope, forgot the whole process. And automaticity is very useful for us because it saves the necessary uh, limited resources of attention. So when we achieve automaticity in our skills, we become very efficient. But efficiency has its cost. This is the paradox of efficiency and automaticity. So Dr. Alan Langer and Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, these two giants in the area of mindfulness approaches to stress management and prevention, help us to understand that in order for us to reduce our suffering, the pain, the stress, we have to become aware of what's happening in our life, what's going on here with full attention, be able to observe it and detach from it. Therefore, we have a choice 
we can do something about it. Most of the problems, we have assumption that says that most of the pain is caused by ourselves. But when you hear this for the first time, you don't understand why is that most of the pain and suffering can be caused by ourselves. Well, it's because of the way we think, the habitual, reflexive manner we, 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 we do, we do things. So the mindlessness is the opposite of mindfulness. Mindlessness is when you look at things with a lot of judgments. So you look at life is going on, for instance, but you never really experience it live firsthand. You are really judging what's happening in your life. That's not mindfulness. That's mindlessness. Mindfulness allows us to open to different perceptions, perspectives, different views, different opportunities for achievement, for success, for relaxation. So. In our approach to stress management and prevention, we have this approach that emphasizes mindfulness. And I'll give you an example here, for instance. In the process of communication and resolution of personal conflicts, we have emphasized the importance of practice mindfulness in relating to people. In daily living, mindfulness is so important in eating, in, ch in the choices of food and beverages, Mindfulness can be a basis for practicing our uh, every aspect of our daily life. All right, so you will get a new perspective in this new edition, and we're going to focus on from every chapter forward, chapter four onward to the chapter in the end. For instance, in the last chapter, we emphasize the importance of achievement and flow, and positive psychology. But always there's a aspect of mindfulness in there. For instance, when athletes achieve great things, they are actually there. That they are in that moment. They are mindful. They are doing what they have to do they, because they enjoy it. They put all of themselves into it. So I hope that you have a chance to experience mindfulness in this process. We'll teach you to become more mindful through sitting meditation, standing meditation, walking meditation, eating meditation, and all these exercises that have been used by great uh, researchers, Alan Langer, Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, will help you develop a very high level of consciousness and mindfulness. So let's embark on the journey of stress management and prevention. Thank you.